Order. I now call the Right Honourable Gentleman Member for Dorset West to make an application for leave to propose a debate on a specific and important matter that should have urgent consideration under the terms of Standing Order No. 24. The Right Honourable Gentleman has up to three minutes in which to make his application. Sir Oliver Letwin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Order, order, order. Oh, resume your seat. Resume your seat, Mr. Order. Resume your seat. I don't let require any lectures in democracy from the Honourable Gentleman. I will advise the Honourable Gentleman of precisely what the position is, and it will brook of no contradiction. And that position is this. First, the Honourable Gentleman was rather laggardly and slow in rising when I had already called the Right Honourable Gentleman. Untypically so, I readily acknowledge. Secondly, I say to the Honourable Gentleman, in terms of crystal clarity, if he wishes to raise a point of order, he will of course have the opportunity to do so. I challenge him to identify any occasion upon which I have sought to deny him, and I do not do so. I am simply saying that I will take the application first. There is subsequently a 10-minute rule motion before we proceed to any debate, if there be such. The Honourable Gentleman is never knowingly understated or not heard when he wishes to be. I will hear him. Patience, sir, it will be rewarded. I call Sir Oliver Letwin. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I can be brief. In the light of the Government's decision to prorogue the Parliament uh, next week, it has become an urgent matter for Parliament to discuss, in particular for this House to discuss, whether it can accept a no-deal exit. And I therefore am asking you to grant an urgent debate under Standing Order 24 about that matter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm very grateful to the Right Honourable Gentleman for his application, which is not entirely a matter of surprise either to members of the House or to large numbers of people outside it. I have heard what he said, I am familiar with his rationale, and I am satisfied that the matter is proper to be discussed under the terms of Standing Order No. 24. Does the Right Honourable Gentleman have the leave of the House? gentleman clearly enjoys the support of the House. I will go further. I will be my normal generous self to the Honourable Gentleman the Member for Wellingborough in advertising for those who didn't hear it that the Honourable Gentleman was robustly objecting, which he is absolutely entitled to do. So people need be in no doubt that there was an objection. In those circumstances, it is necessary for at least 40 members to rise in their places to support the application. There is a very much larger number than 40 members rising in support. So the Right Honourable Gentleman has obtained the leave of the House. The debate will be held today as the first item of public business. It will last for up to three hours. Uh, that is to say, if it starts before seven o'clock, and it will arise on a motion that the House has considered the specified matter set out in the application by the Right Honourable Gentleman. We now come to the ten-minute rule motion. Oh, well, the Honourable Gentleman is... I wouldn't even say chuntering. He's gesticulating in a mildly eccentric manner from a sedentary position, but I'm all agog to learn more of what he wishes to raise in his point of order. Point of order, Mr Peter Bow. Thank you, sir. It was really uh, uh, just a procedural point, and I draw your attention to page 33 of Standing, Orders, uh, Standing Order 24. When a Standing Order is notified on a Tuesday, it has to be by 10.30 in the morning. I inquired in the vote office after 10.30 this morning and was told that no Standing Order 24 application had yet been made, though they were expecting it. So it seems to me, sir, that under those circumstances it could not be heard today and it should have been heard 
tomorrow. And that was why I was trying to make the point so early on, so we couldn't go through it. And that seems very clear. Well, uh, I understand the rationale of the Honourable Gentleman, and I thank him for explaining his agitation to raise his point at an early stage. However, I must advise the Honourable Gentleman that the responsibility of a member seeking to make such an application, I must admit I thought he would have known this because he's a keen partisan of parliamentary opportunities for backbenchers, the responsibility of a member seeking to make such an application is to lodge that application with the Speaker. And I can advise the Honourable Gentleman that that application was lodged with me and my office yesterday evening. So it was well in time. Moreover, I hope I carry the House with me in observing that whatever people think of the Right Honourable Gentleman, the Member for Dorset West, his courtesy is unsurpassed by any other member of this House. And it was partly on account of that courtesy and because he wanted his intentions to be entirely intelligible that he was keen that his motion, if judged orderly, should be published as early as possible. And it was published some hours ago. So the Honourable Gentleman has had a good try, but I think that his efforts on this occasion, on that point, have been exhausted. And I would suggest that the courteous thing now to do would be to proceed with the 10-minute rule motion for which the Honourable Gentleman, the Member for Croydon South, has been patiently waiting. Ten-minute rule motion. Chris Phil. Yeah.